Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can locate and capture Camponatus herculeanus queens, or any wood boring at species. Like this Camponatus queen just casually sticking her head out of a log. The country I'm in is Sweden, but Camponatus herculeanus can be located throughout all of the northern hemisphere including countries such as Canada and the United States. I go on Google Maps and search for places where there has been deforestation and logs has been left over and started to rot. This is a perfect place for Camponatus and other wood boring and species to found their colonies. The place I'm searching today is a location which has been in this condition for about a year. Since the nuptial flights usually takes place around late May to July here there is still time to find last year's queens after their first hibernation. At this point their first brood is still in a larvae state or with their first nanitics workers. This makes it much easier to collect all of the colony without harming or losing any workers. This log is in a perfect condition where the bark is soft enough to be torn apart gently with a hammer, screwdriver, hands or anything convenient that without any risk to harm a potential queen underneath. When tearing up the bark, I'm looking for any sign or activity that an ant queen has chewed through the bark. Sometimes they leave something which looks like sawdust or a hole, deeper into the log. A good early sign is to find dead queens. During their nuptial flight, they swarm in large numbers. And all of the unfortunately don't survive, often leaving lots and lots of dead queens. As you can see here, I found one almost fully intact. This made me certain that this is a good area to search in. I continued to look around the log for cavities which makes an easy entrance for the queen into the log. And bingo! I found a small hole just big enough for a queen to make her way in. After some digging, I started to find Nanitic's worker and brood. They're incredibly fast so you have to be ready to gently pick them up as they emerge. Now it's just about finding the queen herself. Even though Camponatus herculeanus is one of the biggest ant species in the world, they're still incredibly fragile and can easily be damaged when extracting them from their nest. I usually recommend to capture queens during their nuptial flight as it is easier to capture them without having to dig through a log. Also, I do not want to remove a potential successful colony from the wild. But sometimes you're just not fortunate enough to find the right date and weather for when their nuptial flight occur. During my years I've only been able to see this phenomenon once or twice. Also I've been able to raise successful wild colonies before. So I see no issues in doing this as long as the colony is not too big. I know she's here somewhere. It's just a question of surgical precision to make this work. And there she is. It's a large and healthy queen. Now it's just a question of getting her into a test tube. This part can be a little bit tricky. Even though Camponatus herculeanus are unable to sting like Myrmica species or use acid as Formica, they can still bite quite hard. Their bite is powerful enough to easily decapitate any smaller prey with ease. I've been keeping Camponata species on and off for some years and they are a very fun ant species to keep. Herculeanus colonies can grow to large numbers reaching well over 20,000 individuals. Also, Camponatus are polymorphic, which means they have different type of workers. Minor, media and major which differ in size. The major workers can grow up to almost the same size as the queen. They are known to defend their nest and hunt their prey ferociously. Consuming a lot of food as their colony grows bigger. Knowing that there are living queens in this log I decided to continue looking for more. During this time there was also the nuptial flight for the Formica rufa species and they were literally crawling around everywhere. Here I found another cavity in the log, looking much as the one before. This time, I managed to rip the entire piece of wood from the log and I decided it was easier and more gentle to use my hands trying to extract this colony. Sometimes the wood is so moist and rotten, it's easy to take it apart, making the job a lot easier. Speaking of the queen, 
Camponatus herculeanus or monogen, which means the colonies contains a single queen. Other species like Myrmica are polygen, allowing the colony to have multiple queens. Also, they are fully claustral. This means that from the nuptial flight to the birth of her first workers, the queen doesn't require any food as they have nutrition stored within their thorax. So the optimal thing to do if you capture a queen during their nuptial flight is to put her in a test tube setup and forget about her until the first workers emerge. However, if you want a colony with workers, this method is something for you. I decided to take the entire piece of wood home and let the colony live inside their founding chamber. When I got home I could see the queen emerge to say hello and I could also see her brood and nanitics behind her. I decided to give them some fruit flies after the long trip home. You can see she's either not very happy to have uninvited guests in her home or her brood is really hungry. You can see her attack the fruit fly aggressively, tearing it up with her powerful jaws. In the wild he diet consists of the honeydew produced by sap sucking insects and the ants also consume any insect larvae that they encounter. The ant cricket Myrmacophilus pregandi sometimes lives in the colony, where it is tolerated by the ants. Therefore I try to mimic their natural diet by feeding them honey water and insects consisting of mealworms, crickets and fruit flies. But as the colony grows larger so does their appetite. An ant can eat up to 30% of their body weight on a daily basis. So having one of the largest species on the planet which can grow up to 20,000 individuals, you guessed it. They eat a lot. Camponatus use their major workers to tear up larger prey and to store food, where they distribute the food to the workers and brood. Camponatus herculeanus is the most cold tolerant ant species known, surviving to below minus 40 degrees Celsius. Perhaps that's why they are considered the Hercules ant, due to their strong jaws, huge size and durable bodies. This truly is an amazing ant species to keep. Thank you for watching the video. If there is anything else you would like to see or know, please let me know in the comments. Happy ant hunting!